Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm looking at binomial expansions for approximations. This is following on from a previous video I made on binomial expansions, so make sure you check that out first. I'm going to go through three examples today because they're quite lengthy. So make sure you grab a pen and paper and do the work yourself, pausing and rewinding as you need. And please do get in touch, let me know if this is helpful. You can leave a comment below or email me at starfishmaths at gmail.com or go to the website starfishmaths.com. Please do feel free to get in touch to ask about private tuition or small group masterclasses. I hope this is helpful and if you're ready, let's get started. So in my last video, we looked at binomial expansions when your power is a positive whole number, a positive integer. And what happens is you get a beautiful, tidy expansion um, of a finite number of terms. So that's a polynomial. So today we're going to look at what happens when your power isn't a positive integer. Um, and you can still use a binomial expansion of sorts, but it's not going to give you a finite number of terms. It's actually going to give you a, an infinite expansion, so an infinite series. Um, and these can be used for approximations for all kinds of stuff. And it's also just another algebraic tool that you can use. So we're going to look at the binomial expansion of this. Um, I've changed the power to an n so we can do the general case here. Because the way to expand this is to use a different formula. Um, and I'm not going to derive the formula today because it's using quite advanced math, um, more advanced than this. But I'll talk through how to use the formula and you're often given this formula in a formula sheet. So. When you've got 1 plus something to a power, um, it has to be in this form, it has to be 1 plus. Uh, so if it isn't 1, you have to manipulate it so that it is 1, and we'll look at doing that. Um, and then plus anything to a power. So here we go, the formula, the first term is 1, which is nice and easy, um, and the second term is the power times that thing there, so nx. The third term you use your power n and you times by n minus 1, 1 less than n, divide by 2 factorial, um, and as a reminder, factorial means multiplying by all the numbers beneath, so 2 factorial is 2 times 1. You're then going to multiply by that x squared. Let's do the next term on, um, again start with n, and multiply by n minus 1, and this time we'll do another one, we'll do a third, n minus 2. And instead of 2 factorial, it's now going to be 3 factorial, so that's 3 times 2 times 1, and x cubed this time. And I'll just put a plus dot dot dot, because as I said, it's an infinite expansion. So you'll never be asked to do more than the first few terms. We also need to be aware that um, you can't always use this. You can only use it in certain cases. Um, it's only valid when that thing there is less than 1, the modulus is less than 1. And that's really important to know. If it's um, beyond 1, if it's bigger than 1 or less than minus 1, then um, this expansion just won't work. OK, let's run through an example to see how to use this. All right, here we have our first example. Uh, for the first example, I'm going to keep this number as 1, so we don't need to worry about that bit that I said. Um, but this here, minus 3x, that's going to be the bit in the formula that says x. And then our n here, the power is minus 2. So hopefully you've got that formula written down, if not, rewind and get that back. Um, but the first term is 1, the next term was n times x, so we're going to use that minus 2 as our n, and the x um, is the bit after the 1, so minus 3x. The third term, we're doing n times n minus 1, so that will be three, uh, minus 3, and uh, dividing by 2 factorial, and then we've got our minus 3x bit all squared. And if I can squeeze it on, we'll do one more term here. So we've got minus 2 times minus 3, and then another one, minus 4, all over 3 factorial, and then um, minus 3, <laughs> and I'll just put it here, minus 3x will be cubed now. Let's just practice simplifying that. So 1 plus 6x. I make that 27x squared, and then 108x cubed. And I really should put a plus dot dot dot, because there's way more. <laughs> Alright, and I also said um, it's valid 
uh, only in certain times, so we need to write the validity. And I said when this bit, the modulus of that is less than 1, so because it's a modulus we can just disregard that negative sign bit. That needs to be less than 1, and then you can um, move that 3 if you want to, and use uh, modulus of x as less than a third. Great, if you just watched me do that, you might want to rewind and have another get that yourself. If not, let's look at another example. Okay, the next example is looking at the root of 4 plus 6x. Um, so let's write that as a power rather than a root sign. And um, I've also included a number here that's not 1 to show you what to do. We need 1 there for, to use the formula, so we need to take 4 out as a common factor. So removing that from the bracket, we'll get 3 over 2 x. Now, it's all to the power of a half. Your 4 will also have a power attached to it because you can pull the 4 out of the bracket but it will still have that power. 4 to the power of a half is 2, so uh, you can just put 2 at the front of all the formula. So, let's have a go. I'm going to use some squiggly equal sign to show that I'm approximating here. And 4 to the power of a half is 2, so I'll open up some big brackets with 2 on the outside. And let's use the formula. So starting with 1 plus nx, n is a half, and x is 3 over 2x, n, n minus 1 will be minus a half, and we'll do one more. <laughs> Just squeeze that on. So it's t two times all of that. Let's try and simplify. Okay. We can multiply everything by two if we want to. Nice, well done if you got that. Let's just check the validity. So as I said, um, this bit, the modulus of it has to be less than 1. So make sure you take that and not the 6x. It needs to be in this form when that's 1. So this bit here. And again, you can just move that 3 over 2 onto the other side if you want to. So just to show you a quick um, application of this. Let's see what happens when we give x a value. So let's take x is 0 0.1. So remember, it's, it's only valid when x is less than 2 thirds. Now 0 0.1 is less than 2 thirds, so we're okay, this will work. So when x is 0 0.1, um, then in here, 4 plus 0 0.6 gives us 4.6. And as a fraction, that's 23 over 5. So when x is 0 0.1, then all of that will be root of 23 over 5. Um, and then we can use 0 0.1 in the expansion and get a value for that. So the, just the first few decimal places, I get 2.145. I should probably use squiggly, a, an approximation sign here. You can use this as an approximation for thirds. So see how when you pick a number for x, you can use this to get an approximation for a third. Great, let's look at one more example. Okay, we're going to finish with a slightly more complex question. Um, so this is a combined binomial expansion problem. And we've got a fraction here, and it's all squared. So first of all, we can write that as a multiplication of two terms. So bringing that denominator up with a negative power. And this time, we'll just look for the first three terms because we've got a little bit more work to do. Just for shorthand here, I'm going to call this bit A and this bit B. So A is just a straightforward um, quadratic expansion, so that's nice and easy. And B, um, we need to use our formula. And again, we don't have one here, so you need to take that out. So remember it'll have the power attached to it as well. And then we can use the formula. So have a go at that. So 
simplifying that I should have put an approximation sign here because we're only doing the first three terms okay now to get the whole thing we need to do a multiplied by b so we've got two expansions multiplying with each other I'm going to put the quarter right at the front of all of it just out of the way Now let's see what we get. We'll have 1 multiplied by 1, which is 1. We'll have 1 multiplied by minus x. And that one there. We'll have the minus 6x multiplied by 1. And minus 6x multiplied by minus x. Now the minus 6x times that one will give us a cubic term, which we don't want because we only want the first three terms. So we're only going to go up to x squared. So we'll forget that bit and move on to 9x squared, multiply that by 1. And I'm not going to do any more because 9x squared times x will be cubic and those ones times the other will give x to the power of 4, which is all too high. We just want the first three terms, so that's it. So we can just simplify that up. And that's it. Great, well I hope that was helpful. Keep on practicing and enjoy. Thank you for watching.